Hi, I'm Philip Carrion with Main Source. In the 80s and 90s, the mullet reigned supreme. Men wore it, women wore it, everybody wore it. And so you can wear it again. But this mullet is going to be a little bit more updated and brought into today. It's something that I believe that many people can wear. It's a little bit shorter mullet on a woman and we've done some exciting color on her and it's gonna be very feminine and cute. You're gonna really love it. Please subscribe and also leave me a comment. I'd love to hit you back. Hi, so we're here with Sammy and we're going to be doing the oval mullet. First, take out a triangular section from recision area, recision area, and back. What I'm looking for here is for the sides on a shorter level to sort of fall into the cheekbone area. And then I'm gonna work my way down on a 45 degree angle. And as I get to the back, I'm going to keep my elevation up because what happens when you keep your elevation up, then the hair drops out longer. We're going to be doing a razor cut with this, so let's get started. On a diagonal, take a one inch parting from the bangs to the back of the ear. Then part from the crown down to the back of the ear and clip away your front quadrant. Now, follow your diagonal line back to the middle of her nape and from the crown down to the mid nape and clip off your second quadrant. With firm tension, cut a diagonal line curving from the hollow of the cheek to the mandible corner. Detail the ends with the tip of your feather blade to free up the edges even more. Use the back end of your sideburn guide to connect the back. Start to angle your fingers down, but don't bring your hand down to keep your elevation up. Take the comb from underneath and scoop up. And then you can come on top once you have your elevation. And what I'm gonna do is continue that line. And I like to use the blade because, like I said, I like to have a clean cut. And so I can use it against my skin here. And then I'm gonna go back really quickly and kind of just detail those edges so that they're not quite so clean. Continuing on your diagonal, part off a new section in both the front and the back quadrants and clip away. I'm scooping from underneath just so that I lift up and not force the hair down. And follow my guide. I can see it peeking right through. And again, scoop underneath, lift, Make sure you see your guide. Once you establish your length, then you can start moving back with the angle, with the oval, okay? What we're getting is an oval when it's up, when it's elevated, but when it's down and it drops down, we get a little bit more length and a little bit more texture there in the back. Continue up the head. Okay, so maybe you can see the shadow of my guide in there. I'm just going in with the tip of the razor and then I'm going in on top. So now I'm getting into like the real thickness of her hair. You know when you get around the parietal ridge of the hair, it tends to be the thickest. So your texturizing can then sort of beef up a little bit. You can do a little bit more. You can see that that's going to all pop up and fly out. Now what you're seeing is I am going behind my fingers. So I slide out and I'm taking the razor behind my fingers and really carving in there a little more because I'm getting really dense now. And so what's happening is there's weight. We're kind of one length all the way from here to here, but you don't ever see a line. Once you've completed one side, we're going to repeat on the opposite side, parting off your two quadrants, front and back. Continue that diagonal parting all the way back to mid-nape. Establish your sideburn guide section in front of the ear. Connect your back and sideburn sections directly over the ear. Make sure your fingertips are angled out. Follow all the way through the back of the nape. Once your guideline is established, move up the head to continue your cut. So then raise up from underneath. I can see my guide right there. 
Being able to follow your guide is crucial. This is why I like the feather blade to achieve a clean enough line that I can cut right along the skin of my fingers. I can always find my guide while creating great texture. Scoop your comb up from underneath to achieve high enough elevation. Now the hair is starting to kick out. So what's going to happen, we're going to get that little bit of hug in there, which I want. When you get about the parietal ridge, part your diagonal partings, moving all the way through and crossing to the opposite back side. This is where we start to angle down. You can see my guide in there. If you take your eyes and look here, what you don't want to do is overextend this and pull it off its axis, so to speak. And what you want to do is slide your fingers around. It makes a huge difference. Cutting spaces behind your finger gives added movement. Be sensitive to your client's texture. So if you notice, I'm literally crossing over into the other side now. Everything gets pulled both ways. I see my guide and follow and then come back behind a little bit to really diffuse that line. As I get closer to the top, Sammy's hair gets really heavy. I can use the blade behind my fingers, but you need to slide out past your guide, watch it drop out, and then cut. So I'm at my last section, going behind my finger. Cutting the hair behind your fingers gives more texture. Cutting your hair in front of your fingers will give you more control. Carve out your first horizontal half inch parting for the fringe bang section. Meticulously pinch the section flat and bring it to the bridge of the nose. Watch this very slight pivot to the blade as I move from right to left, leaving the center shorter and the outer edge is longer. And then I'm just going to trail down a slight bit. That little bit of shortness in the center, just nice, you know. Again, when you pinch and pulled it to the center, it starts to drop already because you over-directed it to the center. So I can follow that angle. I can see right where it is. Continue up to your next section. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little piece from the center like this. I see where my guide drops out. I see it right there. And I'm just going to take the razor on its flat, on its side, by switching your technique to these micro vertical strip sections, you can achieve a more bitty fringe. Cutting with lower elevation keeps the bittiness right on the ends, but higher elevation gives more bittiness through the shaft of the hair. As you get to the last bang section, continue this process. When you arrive to the outer micro sections, twist away from the face to force an outward flow. I'm kind of liking that there's just this sort of drop piece there for now. And we're going to use the fringe as a starting point. And so I'm going to take a strip down the middle. I've got this short piece to start with. And if I zip straight off, I've got a pretty short top. And that can work for clients. I love that. As I get back here, if you notice, this is from what I cut on the sides. So I can immediately join this in and get a relatively nice connection. I'm going to start here. And what I'm going to do is go under my finger and go from shorter to longer. Now, I don't want this crown to stay the length that it is. I want a little bit of layering in there and I want a little bit of texture. Remember, this is going to be my longest point. This center strip will serve as a guide to all the internal layering and texturizing. This key guide starts at the bangs and works all the way back straight through to the center nape.
Next, you'll pivot pie-shaped sections all the way around from the bangs down to the back of the nape on one side and then the other. Line up your first pie-shaped section with your guide, the pivot point being at the crown. Slide to maintain length on your drop bang piece. Always make sure that you see your guide. Use the blade to flick the hair above your fingers to create a textured edge. I have this short piece here and this short piece here, so I'm taking off in between there. Those are my guides. Watch in slow motion to see that you can't cut your finger with the feather blade. Tapping the hair with your feather blade creates a beautiful fractured edge. Continue pivoting your pie shaped sections, cutting all the way to your guideline at the back middle. So you can see as I move down the head, I don't keep overextending up. That's going to maintain too much weight at the bottom. So I'm going to take it like, up, like right about the occipital bone or above. When you cut your oval shape, what you should have is a point right in the center. And so what I'm going to do is sort of diminish a little bit of that point then move from side to side of the center point, eliminating and using the tip of your razor behind your finger grip to create deep spaces that are above the ends. Continue up towards the crown with the same process. As you get higher up, cut deeper with the tip of your feather blade. So this long piece I'm going to take up. I overextended to keep length, but it also kept the hair a little bit weighted. I want to keep the length, but I don't want it to be heavy. Twist and cut small sections to open up space and reduce density. This will help with movement a little bit, and it will also open up this area. I want to expose a little bit of the color and again, take away some of the weight. And so by twisting it and then cutting down with the razor, it kind of unravels and leaves me a little bit more of a point at the end. It just creates a lot of movement without like cutting the hair shorter and shorter. So on this, I'm gonna turn it away from the face. I turned away from the face on the other side. I can see where the bangs start to pop out and I can start to take it from there so that it opens up here a little bit. Even without styling, your cut will work on its own. Cute, huh? I love working with hair. One of my favorite products to do that with is Behave. It's a product by Euphora. It has the slightest bit of setting action, so it never gets stiff. I'm gonna go around all the framing around the face where all that color is. And you can see, like this, with this oval, it's so versatile. Even with the fringe that we cut, like, if she wants to make this high and kind of Bowie-like in the front and have these pieces that kick out, just kind of looks more modern. You can really see that sort of mullet shape that's happening. It's new, it's different. It's not the whole top disconnected short top and long back. Don't be afraid of the word mullet. We've used it for so long to describe some haircut that we didn't like. Look how smashing Sammy looks with this. And on top of it, we got that kind of like David Bowie, ultra feminine, you know, a little bit of pop on the top and this long tail that's hanging on the neck with this beautiful oval shape. Find the mullet that's right for you. Don't forget to subscribe, press the yellow bell so that we can inform you when a new video comes out and leave me a comment. I'd love to comment back to you, okay? Take care.